strategy. The essence of strategy is choosing what not to do more than what to do. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Carrot Cast. Now, the Carrot Cast, we're usually diving in doing interviews with amazing real estate investors, amazing real estate agents. Now, in these episodes, every Thursday, they're the Trevor Truck Talks, where you get to hear behind the scenes of the mindset shifts I'm going through as a CEO of one of the fastest growing companies in America and the mindset shifts you can take to run your business and win back your freedom as well. Let's dive into this episode. Man, it's raining on the way to the office. Just dropped my kids off to school. And guys, I'm going to be diving back into the Trevor Truck Talk Life Truths list because uh, I've been picking up my reading again and finding some amazing, amazing life truths. And if you ever feel like you're getting too busy, if you ever feel like you're doing lots of things and you're like, man, it doesn't feel like I'm moving the ball forward in business or life. It could be fitness. It could be revenue. It could be deals. It could be whatever. And you go, man, I'm doing lots of things and I feel overwhelmed. I feel busy, feel like I'm doing a lot of things, but man, it's not happening the way I thought it would. Well, I'm going to be talking about strategy in this episode of a Trevor Truck Talk. And this is going to be coming out of, out of the life truths. And I'm going to be reading this right now. Uh, this is going to be coming out of the life truths from the book called The Coaching Habit. And The Coaching Habit is a book I read about a year ago. I'm going through it again right now because... As Carrot's been growing, you know, we're over 50 employees now, which is which is pretty darn crazy. If you would have asked me seven years ago, five years ago, uh, if we'd have 50 employees, I would have said absolutely no. It would have been no chance. Um, and uh, shoot, I remember last year at the start of COVID, we rolled out this docu-series, this mini docu-series. I think it was six or seven episodes called Small Town Hustle. Uh, if you haven't had that, if you haven't checked that out, yet to go to our YouTube channel on Carrot and look up the Small Town Hustle playlist or we'll link it up in the show notes. Um, but the reason I'm bringing this up is I was watching some of those episodes the other day. I was just kind of getting reinvigorated. I'm like, man, this is a cool story because when you're in when you're in one of those weird mindsets, like I said in the last episode, we need to add positive aspirational new thoughts. So get the ants, the automatic negative thoughts out of out of your pants. And the way you do that is positive aspirational new thoughts, you know, the pants acronym. Um, and one of the ways I did that was going back and looking at amazing content that's inspired me. And I also went back and looked at some of those small tone hustle episodes because it, it gets me, um, it, get, it gave me context for how far we've come. And in that, in that, um, in one of the episodes, I think it was episode two or three, I talk about, oh my gosh, you know, we've got a lot going on back home and da, 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 we're almost 20 employees and it's crazy. And that would have been, I think 2018 or 2019. So we're more than double that now. And the big thing that I've found over the years, anytime we get really, really busy with work, anytime we, we are doing lots of things, lots of projects on the list, you know, you're bouncing back and forth between things. You, you don't know what, what, how to balance your week. You look at your day schedule and you go, man, these things look like they need to get done. But then you get to the end of the end of the week and you say, man, I don't feel like I actually accomplished moving the ball forward. I don't feel like I, like we're getting closer to our goals. I don't feel like we're getting clearer on what we need to do. I don't feel like we're executing the right things. I don't feel like I'm giving, I don't feel like I'm getting energy right now from my business because it feels like I'm just on the treadmill of trying to put out fires and just trying to get things done and not really clear in this mountain that we're trying to climb and taking one step in front of the next and being confident that I'm taking the right steps. And if you ever get into those modes, it comes down to strategy. Okay, and so this life truth coming out of the book, The Coaching Habit, is the word strategy. Okay, and so let me read this to you. Strategy, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to say, or I'm sorry, choosing what not to do more than choosing what to do. So let me read that again. Strategy, the essence of strategy is, is choosing what not to do more than what to do. And oftentimes we get stuck in looking at strategy as the things that we are going to do, right? So you map out a plan on how to lose weight or you map out a plan on how to grow your revenue or do more deals or whatever it is. And you should be doing that right now for the new year if you're listening to this around the time that I'm recording this. If you're listening to this during some other part of the year, amazing. Uh, it applies for any part of the year because if you feel, see any of those symptoms I mentioned before, we still have time to pull back and say, am I, do I, am I clear in the strategy? Okay. And let me give you an example. So I was in my office yesterday 
talking with uh, Brady and my team. And Brady has a new role at Carrot called content strategist. All right. So strategist, strategy is in the name of his role. And so we were sitting there talking and we were talking about the goals of the company, the goals of the marketing team and how there's a disconnect right now between the goals and everyone's clear in the goals as far as how many customers we want to get each month and how many leads we need to get and things like that. Everyone's clear in those goals. Okay. Uh, the outcomes that we're trying to get are clear. And then the team pulled away and they mapped out a bunch of projects that they think will increase leads and increase customers. And then they're moving on those projects. And the problem is they have probably too many projects going on because they're not clear on what they should not be doing. Okay, they're, they're clear on all these things that they think they could be doing that might impact leads, that might impact customers. But there's this gap because uh, we didn't go through and there's, there's something in the online marketing world, but it also works amazing for in real estate investors, real estate agents, is when you're looking at your growth goal, so number of deals or whatever it is, then there's you know, how many leads do I need to get there that are going to turn into those deals and so on. And then we should pull back and say, well, what are the channels, what are the marketing channels that are currently working to get me deals and leads? And so you should grab a piece of paper or grab a spreadsheet or whatever it is and, and write out, okay, well, I'm getting, I'm getting leads and, and customers from these channels. It might be referrals. That's a channel, okay? And you can have a strategy to drive that channel and to make that channel improve even more. It could be Google pay-per-click. That's a channel. It could be Facebook ads, that's a channel. It could be search engine optimization or SEO, that's a channel. It could be cold calling, it could be text message marketing, it could be direct mail, it could be any of those things. Those are all different channels to find the prospects that you can help serve that may turn into leads and then eventually turn into customers, okay? And so one of the best ways to dial in strategy for the growth side of things as you're heading into the new year is to pull back and say, what are the channels that currently are working right now? Grab a piece of paper, like I said, write down what your current channels are and then how many leads and how many customers or how many deals you've gotten out of that channel in the past 90 days or do, I would do it over the whole year, whole year and the past 90 days. Okay, so it might be year to date, Google pay per click, I've pulled out 200 leads and 10 deals. Okay, cool. Write those numbers down. So 200 leads, 10 deals, and then figure out what your lead per deal close ratio is. So in that in that respect, it'd be about 5%, right? Co right? Because if you're getting 200 leads and, and 10 deals come out of that, that's 5%. So write that down. And then also in that channel, write down how much money you've paid for marketing into that channel and then write down how much profit you've gotten out of it, okay? Because then we can look at it and say, I've put in $50,000 and got $500,000 in profit out of it. Amazing, this channel is working and it's profitable and it's giving me a 10X return on my money. So you might have six or seven different uh, tabs there, six, six or seven different rows of information or columns of information for each channel, right? How many leads, how many deals, what is my lead per deal ratio? Okay. How much money did I put into that channel or what is my cost per deal or whatever you want to do? Something financial there. Okay. And then, and then you should put in what is the revenue that has come out of that? So then you can figure out a revenue, you know, a revenue amount per lead on that channel or whatever it is. Cause then you can really compare the two channels side by side. And that's what we're looking to do here. We're looking to ask ourselves, what are the things we should do? But more importantly, what are the things we should not do anymore? And that's where the strategy word comes in. So spend 30 minutes going through that and writing down your channel marketing and, and then uh, ask yourself as you're heading into the new year, what are the channels that I feel like there's opportunity in heading into this new year? Do I feel like I've barely scratched the surface with Google pay-per-click? Amazing. If you're only getting, if you got two, two deals out of it this year and you just started it, you're like, man, there's opportunity there. Write down your goal for the next year with that channel now. So you have your current numbers with the channel. And then you ask yourself, is there opportunity to grow this channel to reach my revenue and lead goal for the next year for, for the year ahead? Okay. And then you look at your revenue and, and lead goal for the year ahead and you say, okay, what other channels might have opportunity to help me get there? You might look the, at the SEO channel. Or you might look at the referral channel or whatever it is, right? And let's say that your goal is 50 deals this next year. Okay, let's just, I'm making that number up. Let's say that your goal is 50 deals this next year. And let's say this year you did 30 deals. So that's a delta of about 20 deals that you're trying to make up, right? 
So what we should do is say, how am I going to make up those 20 deals? Well, let's look at my channels that, sh that created the 30 deals. And then you might, you might see two of those channels that you go, you know what? If I just stepped into these two channels alone, those two channels could get me the extra 20 deals. I'm just going to ignore doing anything different than what I'm currently doing on the other three channels. Let's say you've got five marketing channels, okay? You're just going to ignore doing anything different on the other channels. You're just going to keep them going the way that they are and monitoring them and making sure that they keep those results. But let's say you're just going to step into that one channel or those two channels that you see opportunity to get 20 deals. So what you're doing here, this is strategy. You're saying, I'm going to say yes to stepping into these two channels more this year. And I'm going to say no to doing anything extra on the other three channels. Okay, let me give you another example of, of how strategy actually helps you say no rather than strategy being what you should say yes to. Okay, if you have a strategy to earn, let's make up an income number. Let's say you want to, let's say you want to make $250,000 this year. Now your number might be way bigger than that. Maybe you want to make a million bucks this year. Maybe you want to make $10 million this year. Maybe you want to make $100,000 this year. Maybe you want to make your first 10,000. It doesn't matter what your goal is. You pick where you are in the level. I'm going to use the number of $250,000. Okay. So let's say you want to make $250,000 this next year. And I'm going to add a qualifier to it because at Carrot, we're all about freedom and flexibility. We want to help you build freedom so you can make a greater impact. Okay. So let's say now that you are saying that I want to make $250,000, but I want to do it not on 60 hours of, of, of work a week. I want to do it on 30. Okay. Let's say I want to do 30 hours a week and I want to make $250,000. Okay, so what the first thing we should do is we should look at how much money you made this year and then how many hours you worked approximately. And I, I want you to find your average um, earning power per hour. Okay, earning power per hour. So if you made $100,000 this year, and I'm making this up, but these numbers are not correct, so I have a calculator in front of me. If you made $100,000 this year, um, or let's, let's do it easier, okay? If you made $10,000 this month, and you worked 10 hours a week, so that's 40 hours. I still can't do this math, okay? You guys do the math in your head. Anyway, do the, do the math. Figure out how much money you made last year and divide it by about how many hours that you worked. Come up with your, um, your value per hour. And now let's say you want to make $250,000 at 30 hours a week. Now do the same thing. Divide that 250 by the 30 and figure out what is your value per hour that you need to be making this year. Okay, so that's your goal there. Now we need to pull back and ask a couple questions. We need to ask a couple questions of, well, how am I going to cut out 20 to 30 hours a week of work? Well, we're going to cut out 20 or 30 hours a week of work by saying no to things, by having a strategy that tells us what to say no to, and by stepping in and focusing in on the things that will actually help us reach our goals with less work. Okay, so we might look, we might look at those channels and ask ourselves, okay, well, maybe this channel is getting me more deals, but this other channel... Man, this carrot channel, SEO as an example, we ran a survey, y'all. We ran a survey to our customers and got hundreds of replies back and we averaged the numbers. The average profit per deal with carrot leads versus the non-carrot leads that they reported is eight times higher, okay? Is eight times higher. The average profit per deal, guys and gals, is eight times higher. Why is that? Well, it's because the prospects are more motivated. They close at a higher rate. They are um, you know, more likely to be turning into a deal and have more motivation, which means they're willing to uh, take a less, uh, a lower offer or whatever it is, okay? So you can look at your channels and, and say, well, if my goal is to make more money with less time, which channels actually do that? Which channels uh, require less of my time but make me more money per deal? And then look at that channel and say, how much opportunity is there to make more money in that channel or to do more deals in that channel? And you may not have the answer, but you could reach out to someone who's an SEO expert or Google PPC expert and say, hey, here's what I've been doing so far. Here's my market. What opportunity do you think you, that there is in this market over this next year or two? to step into that and grow uh, the amount of, of deals that, that I'm looking at. I'm looking at, at doing another 10 deals in this market with PPC or SEO this year. And is there opportunity for that? They might look at it and go, heck yeah, there is. There's probably opportunity to do more of that, more, more than that. And you go, amazing. I'm going to say yes to that strategy. And I'm going to say no to the other strategies that are, that are taking up a lot of my time and yielding a lower average profit per deal. 
Okay. And then, so that's how you're going to say no as you head into the year. So if you're mid year now, you go look at your strategy and you say, my strategy was to do fewer deals, but higher profit per deal, focus on this one or two channels that are going to help me do that and work less hours. That's your strategy. So now you have to say no to everything else. You have to say no to everything else. You have to say no to any of those tempting marketing tactics that come down from a mastermind where that says, man, I'm the person says, man, I'm pulling a bunch of deals out of here. And you could probably pull deals out of there as well. But if it's going to add, if it's going to add 10 hours a week of your time for this next year, you have to ask yourself, is that my goal? Is it my goal to add more work or is it my goal to, to do less work? And then you have to consciously say no to that channel or you have to consciously say, can I take some money and pay someone else to do that? So I am not going to do any of it, but they're going to do it and they're going to be accountable to do that. Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap up this episode of the Trevor Truck Talk. Life Truth um, number 8,052. Uh, I don't know what number it is by now, but it's a lot. And this one is on strategy. Okay, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do more than what to do. And the way that we do that is we have to really analyze our business and ask what is working right now? How well is it working? So, so get those numbers in place. And then what do I need? What are my goals this next year? And then what are the things or the marketing channels in this case that are going to help me get there? Focus on one or two of them to grow the majority of it and say no to focusing on any extra energy on anything else. Okay. I'm not saying to cancel any of your other marketing that's working. If you've got those in a process and it's working well, you could just say, well, I'm not going to do anything differently this year that's going to add any more focus or time or energy on that channel. I'm just going to focus my energy on this one channel, or these two channels. So I'm going to say no to the other distractions. All right, guys. So hopefully this is valuable for you as you're looking at planning this next year ahead. I'm going to do a whiteboard video on this as well. We're going to start doing some whiteboard videos again way back in the day, 2015, 2016, 2017. I did a bunch of videos that were on our, on my whiteboard where I draw, I draw out concepts and we figured out a new way to do this about two years ago. And now I've got a full-time, another full-time videographer in the office. Brady was my full-time videographer. He's moved to content strategist and Braden on my team is my full-time videographer now. So we're going to be doing our first batch of the new and improved carrot whiteboard videos. Uh, we're going to be hammering some out. I'm going to do a whiteboard video on this topic. So you guys can see me draw it out. You can see me talk through the channels and the channel marketing mindset guys. So go to YouTube, find carrot over on YouTube subscribe to us because we're going to be putting out so much new amazing content over there uh, that you guys can, guys and gals can learn how to grow your business with less time so you can get more freedom make a greater impact in your market in your family in your life uh, each and every year guys have an amazing amazing time subscribe to us on YouTube so you can get the updates in the videos as they come out uh, and I'm gonna I'm planning on creating basically a master class on my YouTube channel this next year or two okay I want you guys and gals to come out of there being world-class marketers world class business owners, world-class people who great, build great businesses and make a great impact. All right. So go follow us on YouTube, subscribe over there and guys and gals, as always go over to Apple podcasts, give me a rating and review on the value you're getting out of this podcast. Okay. Are you getting anything from it? I'll read each and every one of them. I, it's, I, I get some amazing, amazing, big smiles on my face when I read these. My team reads them. They post them up and they are a thread of awesomeness internally. The whole rest of our company sees them. So guys, you are noticed. Uh, it helps give me energy, helps give me the focus I need to keep de delivering value to you to help change your life and your business as well. So give us a rating and review and we will see you next week.